I really did mean myself. Anyways, devlog number two. I thought I had the grapple down pat, but apparently I did not. So I went back to Titanfall 2, which really is my guiding light when it comes to player movement, especially the grapple. But unfortunately, the whole Titanfall hack thing made it impossible to even launch a private game. I ended up installing North Star, very easy by the way, launched a private match, tried things out, took some notes, and figured out a couple alterations I needed to make to my grapple. Let's see if I still got it. Didn't stick the landing. What a shame, what a shame. So, after getting some spiritual guidance, I slapped in some quick changes to the grapple mechanics, and I was pretty happy with it. Uh, it's still possible to stop your falling with it, but it won't super suck you all the time. Next, I fixed a bug I noticed in the demo. Uh, currently, the grapple is supposed to have two charges, but in the old demo, uh, once you used up your first charge, it would be completely drained, not what I wanted. So I made it just purely percentage-based, and surprisingly, nothing broke. And a nice little bonus of making the grapple purely percentage driven, I gotta make a nice radial progress bar. UE4 has some default progress bars, but they either expand or are just linear, and I wanted a circular one. Just like in Titanfall! I made a very simple mask, made a material, used percentage to drive the rotation, multiplied the mask by its rotated self, made it so I could edit stuff from blueprints, yada yada yada. Nice radial progress bar. Next, I had some big wall run stuff on my roadmap. First was making it so when you started wall running, there was a minimum entry vertical velocity. Now I thought I had this working, but after playing the demo, it just wasn't. You can slide straight down walls when entering a wall run, which is not what I want. So I figured that out and it all worked out rather nicely. I also simplified how the falling friction is calculated. And to complement those, I also added a maximum entry vertical velocity. It's high, but you won't be able to buzz light your yourself up a wall. Speaking of, I also had to get rid of being able to just wall run straight up walls by mashing the jump key. And for this I really had to think. And after activating all two of my neurons, I decided to essentially just use a timer. So I did some basic calculus to figure out how long it would take the player to fall a given distance after jumping off the wall. I did not make an algebra mistake. I know the quadratic equation. I of course plugged in everything proper the first time. I did not sit around for 20 minutes wondering why things weren't working. I haven't noticed any problems with regular wall running at the moment, but it makes it much slower to just jump up a wall at one spot. I never wanted to get rid of it, I just wanted to slow it down. After touching up wall running a bit, I decided to pay attention to stairs. Now, there aren't any stairs in the demo level, and if we pull up that output log, you can see why big problem. I tried implementing some changes, but nothing was really working. So I ended up just playing with some numbers and establishing a momentary armistice with stairs. Uh, but you can climb up and down them. There might not be a lot of stairs in my game. Finally, I decided to make some better tools. Right now, I have a convoluted process for making moving meshes, and I have a few major complaints. I can't just drag in a blueprint adapter. I don't have a scrub feature, so I can't preview all the moves. Splines are placed at the scene zero, not the actor zero. And for moving things in a circle, I can't see the actual circle. So I got to work. I'm in the process of reworking it, but I added a scrub feature, which also doubles as a way to set the starting position of the mesh. Then I saw the light of the construction script which allowed me to alter the spline and see immediate changes in the location of the mesh. And everything is going great. Until I tried being able to display a circle. I just wanted a circle. After much research and searching hard, I learned about component visualizers. Uh, for my fellow UE4 devs out there, that's component visualizers. And I got something going. And now I can see the circle, which was all I wanted. Now, I haven't finished implementing this because I can't actually move geometry in game, just the scrub feature, but that's for next week. Well, I once again updated the demo on itch.io. Uh, check it out, links in the description. And once again, I am warning you, don't get used to this. I got some bread coming up, but I'm gonna hold you up for a second to show myself. 
If you liked the video, hey, press the like button. Want to subscribe? Please do. I also got a Twitter. Uh, links in the description if you can't read that chicken scratch on screen. I don't tweet much at the moment. I'm trying to get into it, but you know, I figure I'll tweet more often once I have more Twitter friendly material to show. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and I hope you have a good day. Now let's get to the bread. I made a focaccia this week. I got some really great olive oil, like superb. It was picked November of, of last year, so it's ultra fresh. And uh, I went really light on the herbs because I wanted to taste the olive oil. And uh, again, I used the sour, sourdough starter I use for my sourdough. So you can, once you have your own yeast, you can make anything. You don't need the store yeast. And so just make your own bread. It's great. It's great. It's delicious. It's good for you. Make your own bread.